Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First off, I'd like to say, Ka Halal, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught me. Also, would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect, the Akim out there laboring in all sincerity and faith, you know, for this truth. Uh, for the few uh, Akwat, the sincere sisters who watch and believe, Shalom to you as well. Shalom to all of the new fruit, the new viewership, the new believers coming into this faith. Uh, just back with another lesson, and uh, I forgot who I, uh, I think I seen uh, one of these uh, platforms, you know, like a little podcast, you know, I was just driving around today, and it's somebody I don't even think, you know, he necessarily know that he's an Israelite, I think he may even be a so-called Christian, this guy that I was listening to, but he was basically going into how we in the end times, so that magnifies the gravity of the timing that we're in because even uh, people that are without this word, without the, 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 the knowledge of the heavenly father and his son, you know, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, the heavenly father in the name of his only begotten son, you know, those that are without that knowledge, they can even see uh, there's something, there's a, a changing of the guard. There's a changing of the course and pattern of the earth and how everything is operating, so to speak. You know, just looking at all the war, and rumor of war, like the scripture says in right here, what I'm reading in Matthew 24, you know, everything's just completely upside down with these whole, you know, so-called alternative death style movements, I'll call it, you know, it's basically just uh, putting a, 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 it's fractured the morality of this place, man. That's how we know that um, America, which is also Babylon the Great, according to prophetic prophecy, it's the second leg of the Roman Empire, because during the uh, before the collapse of Rome, there was a lot of decadence. Morality was at a decline. And it's the same thing here, you know, which shows that we're at the end of this particular rulership. We're at the end of this particular empire, because everything is just at this point. Brothers be sharing different things, you know, on the on the on the chat that we use to communicate. And, and sometimes it's just too much, man. You know, we just got to get out of here fast, pray for fewer days. But the beauty and the hope for the elect is we're in the end of this rulership. We're in the end time, so to speak. We always got to clarify because it tells you when you read the book of Ecclesiastes um, that the earth abided forever. OK, so the earth, as we know it, is going to abide forever. But Babylon, the great is going to be destroyed. America, you know, in, in the current rulership. You know, known as the the, 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 the the Edomite supremacy is going to be put to an end. And we're in that time right now, man. That's why just everybody's just completely bugged the hell out, man. There's so many distractions and just all of this gossip and chatty patty nonsense. And nobody really cares about the things that really matter on the earth, you know. But the point being made, even those that don't necessarily know this truth, they can see that there's something wrong with the current world that we living in, man, and it and it can't continue on. That's the point being made. Also, the 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 the, the course that we're in right now, it can't continue like this. But before I ramble on, I'll just get the scriptures that'll help me just kind of, you know, illustrate better the point. This is uh, Matthew 24, in verse 12. It says, "And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold." And that's what's happening right now. Iniquity is sin on top of sin on top of sin, man, which America, you know, they perpetuate, they promote sin. Sin gets exalted in this place, man. Those that try to do righteous, they got a bullseye on their back, you know. You make yourself a prey for trying to be righteous, you know, like it says when you read in Isaiah, the 59th chapter. But because in the wages of sin is death. It says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. It says, there's no brotherly love, that term good Samaritan, which it all comes to the scriptures, but there's no uh, neighborly love. You know, I'm, I'm talking collectively, you know, as a whole, you know, within the framework of America or the West, which some would say, but particularly America, what I'm talking about, man, people are more divided than ever. And of course, it starts with you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. You know, you're the most divided nation of people, especially the southern kingdom. You know, Judah, Benjamin and Levi, the, the so-called Negro tribes, man. We're completely divided, you know, amongst our family. It's, we be 
killing each other, you know, more than the other heathen nations in our in these neighborhoods, man. Warring over blocks that don't belong to us, so to speak. But just even just on a general level, of course, within all these other nations, man, the love of many is waxing cold, you know, and that just shows that's a sign. That's a token that the most high gives us that we're in the last days. Like some of these Christians like to say esoteric times, you know. Like that's that elephant in the room that a lot of these Christian pastors don't like to deal with, man. But this is all biblical prophecy, man. We are at the end of this current rulership of wickedness, okay? And that we can see the fruits of it. The love of many is waxing cold, man. You know, and, and this spirit is only going to intensify. It's only going to amplify. The morality that is so-called, which is, I think, is pretty much out of done for the, mo for the majority of people, is going to continue to diminish and diminish. Except for the elect, of course. Those that have received and woke up to this gospel, this truth, okay? Verse 13, Matthew 24 and 13, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So so-called Christians, this is how you're saved and sanctified in the Lord. You have to endure until the end. Once you put your hand to this plow, well, first, once you wake up to this gospel, to this truth, you know, understanding the, the word of the scriptures, the Bible, the prophecy, okay? Then there's going to come a process where you're going to have to, you know, uh, live out your faith for the brothers, the men through teaching, through preaching. And we have to endure until the end. You know, that's the only way we're going to be saved as the most high is elect. So these Christians that talk about they're already saved, what are you saved from? The destruction hasn't came yet, according to prophecy, which we know that uh, you so-called Christians, you don't want to deal with the prophecy. And we're just in the end game, you know. Verse 14. Here's the point in verse 14, Matthew 24 and 14. And this gospel, the gospel is the good news of the kingdom of heaven. Teaching the true Israelites who they are. Who their true power is, what names to call on, you know, for the heavenly father and his son, Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah. Telling our people that the kingdom of heaven is going to be on earth and they're going to be in rulership. And the other heathen nations are going to be subject to them, mainly the chief oppressor that's oppressing them right now. OK, we're at the end of the wicked's empire. That's the gospel. But anyway, it says, verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. So we're in the end times because this gospel, this good news, this this truth of the Bible the true doctrine of our Lord and Savior is being preached throughout the four corners of the earth at this appointed time, mainly through YouTube. And that's also a uh, pursuant to prophecy. When you read Psalms, the 19th chapter, their line uh, would go out the earth because our elders and apostles who taught us, they didn't have to travel by a boat, jet set by plane, private jet or whatever the case may be, booking Delta miles to get this truth throughout the four corners of the earth. The Lord set up the instrument, the Internet, to get this word out there. And since that prophecy has come to pass, man, that shows we're in the end. Because we got camps that believe the true doctrine all, you know, throughout the, 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 the four corners of the earth, man. Throughout all these different nations, man, as a witness, like it says, unto all nations. So even these other heathen nations where our people have been scattered, according to prophecy, at this appointed time, they've woken up or they're waking up, man. I believe through the spirit. I think I heard the elder apostle Tahar said years ago that he feel that the elect was sealed. I feel, I'm starting to feel that same way, man. It's just a few more key prophecies that have to come to pass, you know, in, in its perfection before, you know, Yahweh Shah ultimately cracks those clouds. Before the missile play is really active. Is, is really activated to it ain't gonna just be no more skirmishes and rumors of war okay but we're in those times man that's the point being made man matter of fact i'm gonna jump down to 23 because i was going into earlier how you know the love of many is waxing cold people don't have no love for one another it's just a real cutthroat reservoir reservoir dog spirit prevailing in the earth man you know so we got to pray for fewer days, the believers, man. We don't want this content, this kingdom, 
this current rulership to continue, man. Like, especially the way that these children, Generation Z, are growing up today, man. They It's, it's just completely bugged the hell out, man. But this is Matthew. I'm going to jump down to 24 and 22. It says, and except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. So if we were to continue in this wave of just wickedness, man, the Lord would have to do, which he's going to do it, just like during the time of Noah. You know, when the sin of man pretty much had just reached the height level to what the Most High had to judge. And he flooded the earth at that time during the time of Noah. We're in the, in the second death, which is going to be by fire. But except the Most High shorten these days, man, ain't no going to be no flesh left to be saved, man. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So for the Most High's elect that can understand this truth, that believe, that walk in faith, Days going to be short for our sake, man, so we can get out of here, man, so we can be delivered, so we can be set up in the kingdom of heaven, in righteousness, okay, where a righteous kingdom is going to dwell on the earth. That's what we're looking forward to. So we're not, we're not sad. We're not disappointed about the end of times, man. We're hopeful for our future, man, for the, for the true believers, the, the real brothers and sisters that believe, man, the, the hopeful elect, the elect. OK. But I'm going to go to. Second Ezra, the ninth chapter. Just bear with me real quick. OK, it says he answered me then and said, measured out the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I've told thee before. So that's the, that's what the true men of, of, of faith are going to be doing in these latter days, man. Since we recognize we're in the end times, we're going to be measuring the times to see how much more closer are we inching to the goal line, so to speak. OK, verse two, it says, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. And we're in that time through all of the different prophecies. We had a solar eclipse not too long ago, man. Just all these tokens and signs that the Most High is showing us that we're closer to the time where his son that he sent according to prophecy, that he was sent according to prophecy, is going to come to deliver his people. And then, of course, the destruction is going to be happening simultaneously as the deliverance of the, of the elect of Israel is taking place. Verse three, therefore, when thou shalt be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. So that's what's happening in the earth, man. All different types of earthquakes in diverse places, like it says in Matthew 24, uproars of people in the world. You know, we see the escalated situation over there, you know, in, in the Gaza, in Palestine, Israel area. OK. But that's how we will understand that the most high spake of those things, which were from the beginning, from the foundation of the earth, you know. So we know that these things must come to pass. Verse five, for like as all that is made in the world hath the beginning and an end and the end is manifest. So the end is manifest. The end of all wickedness is, is being made manifest, man. OK. So we have a glorious kingdom to look forward to, man. That's going to be ran in complete righteousness, man. If you're an Israelite, you know, you, you're going to taste the fruit of that. Even if you don't make it on this side, you'll come back through the loins of the elect. But for those that truly believe, you know, we want to be crowned with Yahweh Shah. We want to have a, a seat of governing, you know, with our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah, in the kingdom, you know, for standing so stiffly, like it says in 2 Ezra, the second chapter. So we know that the end is manifest, man. There's nothing wrong with the end coming, man. The end of all wickedness is at stake, man. So the brothers that truly believe, man, you know, we're we're enthusiastic about these times. We're 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 grateful that these times is coming. You know, even though we're going to have to go through adversities and our faith is going to be tested, you know, Lord willing, we keep our integrity. We pray that the Lord doesn't take his spirit off of us, man, so we can complete our course. Oh, yeah, it was something. I think that's in First Peter. Um, yeah, this is First uh, Peter, the fourth chapter in the seventh verse. It says, but the end of all things is at hand. 
be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. So that's that's the time that we're in right now, man. The scriptures talk about in Ecclesiastes, there's a time for everything that's written under the sun. And right now we're just in the end times, man. So we have to be sober minded. We have to be circumspect, watching what's going on around us, man. Paying attention, man. Being prudent, foreseeing our, our steps ahead. And most importantly, praying. The scripture says, uh, pray without ceasing. It says, watch unto prayer. So as we're praying, you know, we got to make sure that we're prudent as well. Okay. There was another one. Because I said something in Ecclesiastes. There's a time for everything. But let me get this real quick. Yep, this is uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and 8. It says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And that's pretty much the point I want to get. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning of, thereof. So that's a great thing that the end of Babylon the Great is on the brink of us, man. We're on the brink of the end of Babylon the Great. Because that only means that we're that much more closer to the kingdom of heaven, to deliverance, to being set back up in our rightful uh, position in the earth. Because we know what's coming on the other side, man, you know. And of course, there's certain things that we have to do. We have to watch. We have to take heed. We have to pray like I'm going into. We have to preach, you know, while, you know, it's that hour while it, we're in that time, because there's going to come a time where we ain't going to be preaching and we ain't going to be able to put these uh, videos up on YouTube anymore. The, the scriptures talk about a famine of the word that's going to come. When you read Amos, the eighth chapter. OK. So for those that are just newly being tuned into this thing, man, if you if this resonates with your spirit, hey, you better you better find out what's going on, man, because you're gonna, not going to have the luxury of, of more grace and time to try to get this thing right, because we're that much more closer to the end now. And a matter of fact, yo, this is a uh, Romans 13 and 11. It says in that knowing the time that now. It is high time to wake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. So right now is, is now to wake out of sleep, man. Seek the creator in the days of thy youth while the evil comes not. We have a time of grace, but that grace, man, is it's, it's closing up just like the Lord had to close the doors to the ark. The doors to the ark is, 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 is getting closed more and more day for day. And our salvation is nearer than when we believe, man. You know, so the hope for the elect is, you know, in the midst of all of this hell and persecution and all of that, that's going to come when the destruction comes. If we, you know, are, are those of are, are those men, the elect, man, we're going to get delivered out of this place, man. They're going to be amazed at the strangeness of our salvation, like it says in Second Ezra, or not Second Ezra, Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter. Okay. So I just want to just say a few words, man. You know, brothers, hold fast to the faithful word. We in the end times, those that don't even necessarily believe or understand this truth, they can even see that, man. Things is just getting weirder and just more just just spooky and just sick day for day, man. So brothers, just, you know, control to the best of your ability what you bring, allow into your spirit, you know. Just because we, we gotta we gotta we're running a marathon, so to speak, but we're we're that much more closer to the finish line. So with all being said, Lord willing and certified, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Bahashim Rakakudash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, peace and blessings to the elect.